Pentella aren't sure why a trick works. Penn and Teller have been performing magic tricks for more than 25 years. Penn is the boisterous talker. Teller, his silent partner. A standard version of this time, it's the magicians who are asking the neuroscientists to explain a trick. It's one of their favorites, where they make balls appear and disappear under plastic cups. You take the ball, you place it in our hand, we vanish it, and it appears underneath the cup. Here's a little variation Telma came up with. He takes the ball, places it in his hand, and shows you underneath the cup, yet it still appears underneath the cup. If you have center ball, place it visibly underneath the center cup. These you side balls, really put them away. We don't need them anymore. We have three balls right underneath here. That's where they regroup. We have a giant ball in the center cup, a more giant ball on either side. And of course, for the finish, it's an American baseball right there. My head is still spinning. <laughs> Amazingly, the trick works even when they do it with clear plastic cups. This is the pen and teller easy to follow version of the cups and balls. Teller has asked Susanna and Stephen to explain one part of the trick. And show it. He's so curious, he's agreed to give an interview, provided we don't actually show him speaking. The thing that I'd like to see Susanna and Steve study is that very elemental move where the ball's on top of a cup and I tip it off while secretly loading the ball. Teller wants to know why we don't see him sneaking a second ball underneath that cup. To him, it's obvious. The neuroscientists record him performing this move and show it to their volunteers. Then, they show a different version, one that blocks Teller's face. That turns out to make a real difference. Like the curved hand motion in a coin trick, the magician's face commands your attention just enough to distract you from what's really going on. Even though you may think that you're looking at the balls all the time, the fact that Teller's face is present can draw your attention away from the loaded balls in the cups. Magic is sort of cognitive juggling. The center ball, the center cup, each of the side balls really come. If you come to a magic show with the intention of exercising your ability to discern fact from fancy and you fail, that's a fine piece of entertainment. <laughs> so it's this wonderful playground where you can just sort of relax and go, oh boy, it's really hard to understand the world. I'm hoping that our work here gives people a different perspective of magic. What's fascinating about our work is that we are a study of human nature, of human behavior. And we have certain information that has been passed down through generations that can be utilized in a way that interfaces with science. And I'm really excited about that collaboration. for the skyline. When we talk about brain power, lots of people think of computers as being even smarter than we are. And for some tasks, they've definitely got the advantage. Queen Com to Bishop Six. Computers have proved to be formidable chess players. In fact, they've beaten our top human chess champions. Knight takes queen. Your turn. Turning. 
turning. You see, they can be stumped by simple ideas or phrases that our brain wouldn't think twice about. Turning. No, not turn. I mean, go. No, 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 not go away. I mean, make your move. No, move one of your chess pieces on this chess board in response to my last play. Bishop to King Seven. Correspondent Jake Ward checked in with researchers to find out just how far we've come in the world of artificial intelligence. Neil. And whether machines will ever pose a real threat. Neil. To the complex power of the human brain. Checkmate. It's one of the most powerful ideas dominating science fiction. To build a machine with mental powers equal to or exceeding our own. To create artificial intelligence. What is love? Or AI. Good evening, Dave. How are you doing, Hal? Everything's running smoothly, and you? Artificial intelligence is trying to get computers and robots to do stuff that if people did them, you'd say, oh, that's what makes humans humans. Now, as everyone knows, artificial intelligence in the movies tends to go seriously awry. But would it in real life? We had better hope not. Because AI is fast crossing the boundary separating fantasy from reality. The world has been totally transformed by artificial intelligence, and it will continue to be transformed. Things are getting smarter, and it's really hard for us to imagine how different it's going to be. It's now five years since this pack of driverless vehicles raced each other across the Mojave Desert. Thirteen years since a chess-playing computer defeated the world's top chess-playing human. Chess world champion Gary Kasparov walked away. And you probably interacted with an intelligent machine today. Then continue point two miles. Want to know what books you'd enjoy? You no longer have to visit the neighborhood bookstore. Today, Amazon's supercomputers and sophisticated software can predict with uncanny accuracy what you'd like. In my case, it's a couple of history books and a lot of comic books. Sorry, I didn't understand. But the AI permeating our world is still a far cry from, say, HAL, the famous computer in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No, not at all. HAL could well, carry on a conversation, so answering questions, and even asking them. How do you mean? But that requires a skill that's difficult for real-life computers. Human language is natural for humans, right? In fact, you can think of humans, you know, natural language processing machines, right? I mean, it's what well, they can be implicit, they can be ambiguous, they use context. But a computer can't relate the words to human experience. They're really just symbols. So it's a real challenge for the computer to take lots of different pieces of language and try to figure out, gee, does this mean that? Given the complexity of human language, could any computer truly understand it? Hello, my name is Watson. I have to test my voice to make sure I can be heard and that I'm not speaking too loudly. Any connection whatsoever? Watson is the creation of a team of IBM scientists led by David Ferrucci. For the past four years, they've been designing this supercomputer to be able to answer questions on, well, just about anything. Watson. Who is Arturo Toscanini? Good. They're now preparing Watson for a very public test. We need well enough to, to do Competing that, so. on the popular quiz show Jeopardy. It's a word game that challenges Watson even the Watson smartest humans. An interview with the maker of this documentary. Jeopardy is a game that changes, right? It evolves. Uh, there's a huge variety of questions. They might ask about movies or sports or geography or politics or anything. So it's kind of the benchmark, I think, for a knowledge of a wide variety of topics and also being able to think fast. Is that right? Many of Ferrucci's colleagues thought a contest on national television against Jeopardy! champions was too risky to undertake. We're going to play for the first round. And the consensus among the group, although I personally didn't share it, was that no way we're not going to do this. Uh, too difficult to do. We'll embarrass ourselves. Did I expect to get fired? No, but maybe. When I'm more